close to midnight on February the 15th of 2015, the police were called to the intersection of East Park Street and Formosa Avenue in Orlando, Florida. The 911 call had been placed after drivers in the area had spotted 31-year-old Amy Carter walking down the avenue in her birthday suit. During her naked rampage, Carter approached a white 2008 Lexus occupied by Eric and Sarah Carlson. According to arrest reports, she began touching her privates in front of the car before she climbed on top of it and started stomping on its hood and roof, causing multiple dents. Responding officers later noted in their reports that upon encountering Carter, she appeared in an altered mental state, displaying extremely irrational and volatile behavior. Law enforcement eventually wrestled the uncooperative woman to the side of the road. They covered her with a blanket after placing her in handcuffs. She was subsequently taken to the Orange County Jail on charges of criminal mischief and indecent exposure. Number 9. Mandy West In May of 2021, Florida woman Mandy West went on a naked rampage through the parking lot of an Aldi grocery store in Oxford. 29-year-old West first got into the driver's seat of a vehicle belonging to a woman whose teenage autistic son was sitting in the passenger seat. West tried to drive off but the car owner who'd been shopping inside the store returned and reportedly sat on her to prevent her from putting the vehicle into drive. West scratched deep into the woman's forearms and fled. She was then reported to have run, in an aggressive manner, at other people in the parking lot, most of whom got in their cars and locked the doors. West eventually managed to get into a vehicle, the driver of which believed she was in distress and gave her a shirt. They traveled together for a short time before West resumed her rampage by jumping out of the car and running through residential properties. She was ultimately tracked down by Sumter County law enforcement in a yard and taken to jail on charges of simple assault and burglary with assault or battery. Number 8. Carla Bales Law enforcement in Chillicothe, Ohio was called to a home on East 2nd Street in the summer of 2023 to report that a woman was wearing her birthday suit in public. Responding officers found Carla Bales standing on her front porch, fully nude, and in full view of other residents. She refused multiple requests from the police for her to step outside but was ultimately handcuffed and arrested. Bales was taken to Ross County Jail on charges of public indecency. Her refusal to comply with the officer's orders resulted in additional charges of obstructing official business. The woman provided no reason for her behavior. Number 7. Matthew Bernard on the morning of August 27th of 2019, multiple Virginia law enforcement agencies, including the Pittsylvania County Sheriff's Office and Virginia State Police, went to a home in Keelan following reports of a shooting. Officers found 62-year-old Joan Bernard dead in the driveway. Upon making their way inside the home, the police discovered the bodies of Emily Bernard Bivins and her son Cullen. The latter two victims were reported as the wife and child of Tampa Bay Rays pitching prospect Blake Bivings. The family's dog was also found dead in the living room. The killer was identified as Matthew Bernard, who was Joan's son, Emily's brother, and Cullen's uncle. A three-hour manhunt ensued and residents were told to look out for the suspect, who was described as armed and very dangerous. Bernard was subsequently located, unarmed and fully naked, in a wooded area. A video captured by WSET-TV showed the triple murder suspect running from the police in a church parking lot. One officer maced Bernard in the face and he subsequently moved towards the direction of the camera person. He then tried to strangle a church caretaker before an officer pulled him off. Bernard was eventually apprehended with the intervention of a canine unit as he was running towards a police blockade. He was charged with three counts of first-degree murder. While in the back of the police cruiser, Bernard repeatedly banged his head against the cage and had to be treated at a local hospital. He was pictured wearing a bandage in his mugshot. Bernard's reasons for killing his family members remained unclear, but one of his cousins told the Daily Mail, unfortunately, he was suffering with mental illness and came to a breaking point. Updates on the matter indicated that Bernard had been deemed incompetent to stand trial. Number 6. Angelic Isabella Valle 23-year-old South Florida woman Angelic Isabella Valle became known as Ketchup Girl 
after a salacious video of her nude in public with the condiment being poured on her body was featured on World Star Hip Hop. The incident took place at a Johnny Rockets on Ocean Drive in Miami Beach on October the 9th of 2015. Valle removed all her clothes in the middle of the busy restaurant as a crowd of men gathered to encourage her. She ended up dancing provocatively while lying on a table as some of the men poured water and ketchup on her naked body. At least one man was seen touching her exposed genitals. Valle eventually left at the request of a restaurant worker and upon learning that Miami Beach police were on their way to the establishment, she exited Johnny Rockets holding a towel and a two-piece bathing suit while telling bystanders, look me up on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. The restaurant management stated that Valle had caused damage to glasses and tables, amounting to a total of $420. The video of Valle quickly rose to over a million views and thousands of comments, most of which were critical of the woman's actions. Valle unapologetically responded in an Instagram video saying, you're just mad because you weren't there, adding that the experience had been fun for her. However, upon learning that the police were looking for her, Valle posted another message that read, I'm going to jail tonight, remember me, okay? I love all of you guys. Valle was taken into custody on charges of incitement to riot, indecent exposure, lewd and lascivious behavior, and disorderly conduct. The man seen touching Valle in the video was also wanted on the former charge. Valle was seen crying during a court appearance in the wake of her arrest. The woman's father also attended the hearing and stated that she needed medication and had gone through mental health crises in the past. Number 5. Andrew Humphreys In the summer of 2017, a deputy from the Marion County Sheriff's Office encountered a man wearing his birthday suit while walking down Highway 441 in Central Florida. The deputy's dash cam captured 18-year-old Andrew Humphreys as he approached the cruiser. After the deputy got out, Humphreys tried to open the police vehicle's driver's side door, but it was locked. The deputy was recorded saying, that's not normal, before adding, you are absolutely naked, my man. Another thing, not normal. Humphreys was handcuffed and placed in the back of the cruiser, where he started pulling on the metal cage and kicking the rear passenger door, causing roughly $1,000 in damage. It would emerge that prior to his arrest, the teenager had been involved in a non-fatal traffic accident. For reasons unknown, he decided to take off all of his clothes and flee the scene on foot. After the collision and before he was found walking down the highway, Humphreys tried to open the door of a vehicle belonging to a Marion County Sheriff's deputy. He pulled the door handle off the vehicle and then urinated on it when he couldn't get inside. The teen, who denied being under the influence, was charged with one misdemeanor count of criminal mischief and one count of felony criminal mischief property damage of $1,000 or more. Number 4. Jessica Smith On a Sunday night in September of 2021, Pinellas County Sheriff's SWAT and negotiator response teams were in the midst of a six-hour standoff with 18-year-old Miles Abbott in Dunedin, Florida. In November of 2017, while behind the wheel of a stolen Camaro, Abbott had crashed into a tree, killing his teenage passenger. In 2021, he was wanted for violating sanctions from a juvenile court regarding the vehicular homicide case. On Sunday, the police had been called to Fairway and Harrison Drives, following reports of three suspicious males in the area. One of them was Abbott, and he fled when deputies arrived at the scene. Law enforcement followed him with canine units, and the teenager fired a gun at bystanders and accidentally shot himself in the thigh during the chase. He then climbed the roof of a home in the thousand block of Michigan Boulevard and pointed his gun at the law enforcement officers below. From an armored car, local SWAT teams fruitlessly tried to negotiate his surrender at one point, even bringing Abbott's sister at the scene. As the tense standoff unfolded, a 28-year-old woman suddenly drove a golf cart through the crime scene. Jessica Smith from Boston, Massachusetts, was completely naked behind the wheel. She ignored the officers commanding her to stop and headed straight for the house where Abbott was positioned. Deputies corralled and arrested Smith, whom they noted smelled strongly of alcohol. The police charged her with resisting an officer with violence while pointing to the fact that her actions placed them at an additional risk of being shot at by Abbott, who'd watched the scene unfold from the roof. Law enforcement eventually used beanbag rounds to bring him down and took him to a local hospital where he could be treated for his gunshot wound. Number 3. 
incident in Canada. In the fall of 2017, a woman, her infant child and her father were abducted from a home in Nisku, Leduc County, Canada by five suspects. The group consisted of a 27-year-old man as well as two women aged 35 and 30 and two teenage girls. They forced the male victim into the trunk of their stolen BMW, but during the drive that followed, he managed to get out. Not long afterwards, his daughter escaped the vehicle with her baby. A good Samaritan took all three in their vehicle as they were running barefoot through the snow. The rescuer's vehicle was subsequently rammed in the rear by the suspect's BMW, which ended up in a ditch. The mounted police and emergency services responded to the incident on Township Road. They found that all five of the suspects were completely unclothed in spite of the 17-degree weather. Videos captured at the scene show them being handcuffed and taken into custody, but no explanation was provided for why they weren't wearing any clothes. The two teens were released without charges while the adults were charged with kidnapping and resisting arrest. Those arrested weren't named as doing so would have facilitated public identification of the minors involved. The victims weren't hurt in the incident. Investigators believe that it was a targeted kidnapping in which drugs and alcohol were possibly contributing factors and that all parties were known to each other. Today's topic was requested by The End of a Bloodline, Paul Roberts 3639 and Scoot 666. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Lisa Luna Deputy Francisco Campillo was called to the Shell gas station in Gila Bend, Arizona, following reports of a woman wandering about in the nude on January the 5th of 2017. Campillo approached a woman who was subsequently identified as 31-year-old Lisa Luna. Footage from the officer's body cam showed the latter telling him that she'd been abused, adding, but I'm okay. Campillo tried talking to her but Luna kept walking towards his pickup truck. She asked for something with which to cover herself and Campillo went to the back of his vehicle to retrieve a pink blanket. Upon returning, he found Luna in the driver's seat. In the moments that followed, the naked woman accelerated and drove off. Campillo suffered injuries after holding on to the vehicle, but he subsequently recovered. Luna engaged multiple law enforcement agencies in a chase through interstates 8 and 10, during which speeds of 100 miles per hour were reached. Officers deployed spike traps in an attempt to flatten her tires, but the pursuit didn't cease until Luna crashed into a family's vehicle near Eloy. The woman was taken into custody and recanted her initial statement, instead blaming drugs for her behavior. She changed her story again during a media interview from jail, during which she claimed to have been poisoned by a family member. Luna noted, I remember my skin burning like I couldn't handle it. My skin was on fire. I started taking off my clothes. I felt like I was going to die. She went on to say that some of her memories regarding the incident were blurry, also mentioning that she felt possessed and like she didn't have control. Luna had a history of mental health issues as well as a criminal record that included shoplifting, disorderly conduct, theft and assault. For the most recent incident, she pleaded guilty in April of 2017 to theft of means of transportation and endangerment. She was sentenced to two years in prison with credit for the time she'd already spent in custody since her January arrest. If you are longing for more still, then we have our previous episode about when stupidity goes wrong, lined up for you right after number one. Stay put if you'd like to watch that one as well. Number one, Sequoia Duncan Cell. During rush hour on the afternoon of July the 25th of 2023, a woman stopped her vehicle and blocked traffic on Interstate 80 near the San Francisco-Oakland border. 32-year-old Sequoia Duncan Cell then got out while completely naked and with a pistol in hand. She opened fire from the shoulder of the freeway and then walked across the traffic lanes. Duncan Cell kept firing the weapon at commuters and into the air until she ran out of ammunition, but no injuries or damage to vehicles was reported. Bystander videos captured portions of Duncan Cell's rampage before responding officers took the woman into custody without incident. All eastbound lanes near the Bay Bridge Toll Plaza were shut down for about an hour and a half in the shooting's aftermath. 
Duncan Cell received a plethora of felony charges in connection to the incident, including making criminal threats, shooting at an occupied vehicle, multiple counts of brandishing a firearm, and multiple counts of assault with a semi-automatic firearm. The woman consequently faced more than 22 years in a state prison. Number 12. Jamie Coots Jamie Coots was a 42-year-old snake handling pastor who died in 2014 from a rattlesnake bite incurred during a church service at the Full Gospel Tabernacle in Jesus' Name Church in Middlesbrough, Kentucky. Coots was an experienced snake handler who'd been handling snakes for nearly 20 years when he was bitten for the ninth and final time. Coots had gained some notability after he was featured in National Geographic Channel's reality show Snake Salvation, which documented the lives of people who practice snake handling. Coots' religious conviction was based on a passage in Mark's Gospel which reads, They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Fellow preacher Cody Wynn told the news station that he had one of the rattlers in his hand. It just turned its head and bit him in the back of the hand within a second. Coots might have survived had his relatives not refused medical treatment for him, saying it was inconsistent with his religion. A year later, in an event that much reminded people of Coots' incident, a snake handling pastor in Pretoria, South Africa, reportedly died. Penwell Mguni claimed he could turn snakes into chocolate and was feeding them to his congregants, along with rats and toilet paper. According to various news reports, he too was bitten by one of his own snakes, a cobra, and he too refused treatment, succumbing to his injuries not long after. In true miraculous fashion, Mguni turned out to be alive still after all and was last reported feeding frogs, worms, octopi, and dog meat and blood to his congregants. Number 11. Eric Barcia In the late 1990s, Virginia man Eric Barcia died in an accident involving a homemade bungee rope. Instead of using a factory-produced shock cord, the 22-year-old fast food worker taped together a number of elastic ropes. The stretchy strands, which typically have hooks at their ends, are normally used to secure objects. Not only was his contraption extremely unsafe, but Barcia also critically miscalculated the length of rope that he needed before going on a railroad trestle at Lake Ocotting Park in Fairfax County. Barcia tied one end to his foot and anchored the other to the trestle. He then jumped 70 feet, or about twice the height of a telephone pole, towards the pavement below. Since the length of his homemade cord exceeded the distance he traveled towards the ground, Barcia struck the pavement and died on the spot. Number 10. Cedric Jelks In 2017, Florida man Cedric Jelks faced firearm possession charges after accidentally sitting on his gun as 38-year-old Jelks got into his car. He forgot that his weapon was on the driver's seat. He unwittingly sat on the firearm, which had been left armed and without a safety on. It discharged, shooting him in the manhood. The incident reportedly occurred outside of his girlfriend's home. Jokes, who was left in agony, rushed into the bathroom, holding his groin, and his girlfriend then drove him to the hospital. He survived, but no updates were released regarding his condition, and it isn't known if he retained the functionality of his privates. Jokes' accident also had severe legal implications as he'd been convicted of a cocaine-related crime in 2004. As a felon, it was illegal for him to own a gun, meaning that aside from excruciating pain, he also faced time in prison. Number 9. Gary Hoy On July the 9th of 1993, Toronto lawyer Gary Hoy fell to his death from the 24th floor of his office building. Hoy was given a tour to a group of students and decided to show them a stunt he'd reportedly tried many times before. The 38-year-old told them that the windows of the Toronto Dominion Center were unbreakable and to prove it, slammed his body against the glass. Like with Hoy's previous demonstrations, the glass didn't break but unfortunately, he didn't bounce back to safety either. The impact was strong enough to pop the window out of its frame and Hoy plummeted to his death. A structural engineer who commented on the case for a local media outlet claimed that he'd never heard of a building code that would allow a 160-pound or 72-and-a-half-kilogram man 
to run up against a glass and withstand it. Number 8. Sigurd Eysteinsson Sigurd Eysteinsson was a 9th century Viking ruler who played a leading role in the conquest of what would later become Northern Scotland. He expanded his territory from the islands of Orkney and Shetland into the mainland and his military exploits led to him being known as Sigurd the Mighty. Towards the end of his reign, he challenged rival male Brigti, the Bucktooth, to battle. They agreed to each bring only 40 men to the confrontation. Sigurd, however, would treacherously come with double the amount of warriors. Male Brigti was defeated and decapitated, with Sigurd attaching his severed head to his saddle as a trophy. Even though he triumphed over his rival, Sigurd's hubris would echo through the ages. As he rode, male Brigti's bud tooth caught him on the leg. The wound became infected and ultimately led to Sigurd's death. Number 7. Bojan Birš. Croatian man Bojan Birš had spent five years behind bars in the city of Pula before an additional eight months were added to his sentence for sending death letters to an ex-girlfriend. About two months before he was scheduled to be released, his behavior became increasingly more erratic to the point that the guards decided to lock him in a rubber padded cell. Even though he was in solitary confinement with both hands tied behind his back, Birsch managed to pull out a lighter that he'd smuggled inside. He started a fire near the door, presumably in protest, or so that he'd be relocated to a regular cell. Security cameras captured the moment that the fire consumed the highly flammable materials. Before the guards noticed the smoke coming out of the cell, it was already too late. Some reports claimed that they'd purposefully delayed their intervention in order to teach Bish a lesson. Whatever the case might have been, the blaze rapidly extended and they could no longer enter the cell. Bish succumbed to smoke inhalation and his body was consumed by the flames. Number 6. Tetsu Shiohara In late October of 2019, a Japanese man took on Mount Fuji outside of the regular climbing season and with minimal equipment. 47-year-old Tetsu Shiohara live-streamed his ill-fated adventure on Japan's tallest mountain. Climbing Mount Fuji is only permitted during the summer, when the snow melts and the huts are open. Shiohara had been on the mountain several times before, but trekking it outside of the warm months is considered extremely dangerous. In terms of preparedness for the treacherous slopes, Shiohara wasn't wearing crampons and had little else aside from a pair of hiking poles. He'd named his live stream, Let's Go to Snowy Mount Fuji, and a number of commenters online argued that the title itself denoted the level of ignorance with which he approached the climb. At one point, Shiohara claimed that his fingers had gone numb and expressed regrets at not having brought heat packs. Nevertheless, he prioritized filming instead of personal safety and kept heading towards the summit. After a grueling trek, Shiohara was only a few dozen feet from the top. The man passed the safety fence and then told his viewers that he'd reached a dangerous portion. Moments later, he started slipping, feet first, towards the clouds below. Shiohara failed to regain his footing and kept tumbling down the side of the mountain, while his phone was still recording. His lifeless body was discovered a few days later at an altitude of around 10,000 feet. Number 5. Dean Smith in June of 2016, an Australian man was severely injured at a museum after running straight into a wall while racing a virtual athlete. Melbourne Science Works Museum had a special installation in which visitors could attempt to beat a digital version of track legend Cathy Freeman in a race. In the interactive display, a series of images depicting Freeman would sequentially light up to mimic her speed. Visitor Dean Smith who was in his early 40s, accepted the challenge. Unfortunately, Smith got a little overzealous in racing the digital gold medalist. As a result, he plowed headfirst into the wall at the end of the exhibit. The man was rushed to the hospital, where doctors told him he'd been millimeters away from becoming a paraplegic. He'd crushed a vertebra, fractured an occipital bone, and broken a rib. Smith also suffered a stroke from a crushed vertebral artery meant to supply blood to his brain. He was unable to work in the incident's aftermath. Smith eventually sued the museum, claiming that the inadequate lighting had prevented him from seeing the wall until it was too late. Number 4. Air Freshener Explosion 
In 2019, a driver narrowly avoided death following a massive explosion that he triggered inside his car. The incident occurred in the town of Halifax in the United Kingdom. While in stationary traffic, the unnamed driver used an excessive amount of aerosol air freshener inside his car. Even though it's general knowledge that the contents of such products are highly flammable, the man then lit up a cigarette. The ensuing blast was powerful enough to shatter the vehicle's windows, buckle its entire frame, and even damage the windows at nearby businesses. The driver was extremely fortunate as he'd only escaped with minor injuries. Number 3. Aaron DeBella In September of 2018 near Hull in Massachusetts, 21-year-old Aaron DeBella died after attempting to do a handstand on the bulwark of a cruise ship. DeBella and a few of his friends were on the cruise celebrating a birthday. He'd reportedly thought it would be funny to pretend that he was hanging off the side of the ship. The crew had spotted him attempting the dangerous stunt and told him to stop. DeBella initially complied but about an hour later tried to do the handstand again. On his second attempt, the young man lost his balance and fell over. Life rings were thrown in his direction while a crew member jumped in the water and got within a few feet of him. Unfortunately, he didn't reach DeBella in time and he drowned. Number 2. French Kings and Door Lintels Two French kings died under similarly avoidable circumstances several centuries apart. Louis III ruled West Francia in the late 9th century. The young king's reign, which only lasted about three years, was cut short by an accident involving a horse, a girl, and a door lintel. 17-year-old Louis was promenading through the Parisian commune of Saint Denis, which was at the center of his realm. A girl caught his eye and, as she headed towards her home, Louis mounted his horse to pursue her. As he was following the girl, he didn't notice a door lintel and hit his head on it. The impact threw Louis from his horse and he fell, breaking his skull. Over 600 years after his death, Charles VIII of France suffered a similar fate. He was going to watch a match of Jeu de Pomme, which is an early version of tennis. On the way, Charles accidentally hit his head on a door lintel, sustaining massive cranial trauma. As he returned from the match, he abruptly fell into a coma and died several hours later. Number 1. Zaim Koznan In 2018, a Malaysian man was strangled by a python that he was attempting to take home on his motorbike. 35-year-old Zaim Koznan, who was described as unemployed, spotted the 12-foot-long serpent on the side of the road and decided to capture it, believing he would be able to sell it. Koznan used gloves and a sickle to handle the python. He then drove away while holding it by its head. It wasn't long before the python started constricting him, thus causing Koznan to crash his motorbike. The animal continued to coil around Koznan, and he eventually succumbed to its powerful squeeze. A passerby spotted him the following day with the snake still wrapped around his lifeless body. Thanks for watching. Would you rather spend 24 hours naked in the Alaskan wilderness or wearing all your winter clothes in the Sahara Desert? Let us know in the comments section below.